What do we have here? Chlorine 36, 9.25 mega becquerels of the radionuclide in a form of a sodium chloride solution. We also have a solution where the sodium is radioactive and in this case it's the chloride ion. The purpose of such solution as a standard should become clear after watching the video. First let's get some impressions of the activity and the dose rate. A few more nuclear data points as the measured dose rate of 2 microsieverts an hour is quite astonishing. Chlorine 36 has a half-life of around 300,000 years and it's a beta only emitter. It decays to argon 36 via beta minus decay 98% of the time and to sulfur 36 via electron capture beta plus decay 2% of the time. The beta energy is 709 kilo electron volt maximum and 251 kilo electron volts on average. So it's these, well, moderately energetic betters that come through the glass, causing a dose rate of 2 microsieverts an hour, which is quite impressive. Why is chlorine 36 important? Well, the geologists quite like this radionuclide. It's of cosmogenic origin. Secondary neutrons produced by spallation reaction occurring in the upper atmosphere hit rocks. Most rocks contain chloride. Naturally chlorine consists of chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. If the rock is exposed to air and thus cosmic radiation, the secondary neutrons can convert chlorine 35 contained in the rock into longer lived chlorine 36. If the rock is then for example covered during an ice age, no new chlorine 36 can be formed because cosmic radiation no longer reaches the rock, so the chlorine-chlorine 36 ratio can be used to estimate how long the rock has been exposed to the surface or has not been on the surface. This can also be reversed, for example, when new rock emerges for the first time due to a landslide or something like that. This dating method is well suited for a time period between 60,000 and 1 million years due to chlorine 36 half-life. Enough talking about dating rocks, otherwise I will spoil our future projects. There are other ways chlorine 36 is produced in nature. Spallation of potassium 39 and calcium 40 among with the N gamma reactions with chlorine 35 contribute to most of the chlorine 36. Spallation does not mean that an atomic nucleus has to be completely shattered, sometimes just a small piece is knocked off, just to put it bluntly. These nuclear reactions contribute to 16 to 80 percent of this chlorine 36 production, corresponding to a production rate of 4200 atoms per year per mole of potassium 39 and 3000 for calcium. And gamma contributes to 11 to 80 percent. Everything I've described so far are sources of in situ chlorine 36, so how it can be created within the rock. Before I delve deeper into the last niche case on how chlorine 36 can be produced, I wanted to say a few words about interference factors. Meteoric chlorine 36, it can also be produced by spallation of argon 40. So chlorine 36 is formed from the air and remains in the air eventually settling on the surface of the sample. This would falsify the measurement results. Due to this meteoric chlorine 36, the surface of silicate rocks must be removed with hot hydrofluoric acid. Now that meteoric chlorine 36 has been removed, there is still one last step before measuring with the AMS. AMS primarily detects masses and other nucleides with the mass of 36 would interfere. These are the 0.01% of natural occurring sulfur 36. Even though chlorine 36 is precipitated as silver chloride with silver nitrate, sulfur 36 also precipitates as silver sulfide. For this you will use barium nitrate to form barium sulfate. This can then be separated and then the measurement can begin. I hope I can show you how this procedure is done in the lab in the future. If you made it this far I can also introduce you to the very last niche case of chlorine 36 in situ production. Calcium 40 can also become chlorine 36 by capturing a negative muon via a mu alpha reaction. This accounts for 0.3 to 10% of all chlorine 36 and potassium 39 can also undergo a muon capture producing chlorine 36 via a mu helium 3 reaction. These muons are part of the secondary cosmic radiation and can reach the earth's surface 
despite their average lifetime of 2.2 microseconds. This is due to their speed. These particles zoom through the atmosphere at 99.5% of the speed of light and experience time dilation. So the average lifetime of stationary muons is 2.2 microseconds. For fast muons, it's then 13 microseconds, which is enough at their speed to hit the surface of the Earth in greater quantities and then to cause a new alpha reaction in calcium-40. That was really important knowledge that we've gained today. Even more chlorine-36 has also been produced anthropogenically, well by humans, either through nuclear weapon tests, underwater or above water. Due to this anthropogenic chlorine-36 spike in groundwater, this groundwater can also be dated and for such dating work, a standard like this one that we have in the lab is needed. A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Eric Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, goodbye.